Good morning and welcome to the Feline Soft and Art Fund presentation. This morning we're doing crawl, walk, run. We're going to take you through a, um, a, a story about Art Fund. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about Feline Soft, and then Mary will introduce herself before she takes you on the story of Quark Walk Run. So, um, Feline Soft are a digital transformation organization. We've been around for 20 years, but we've been focused on the not for profit sector for probably the last five to six years now. You can see we've worked in a with a variety of clients um, during our time over the 20 years. We've built just about everything from some of the world's largest websites for people like BMW and Rolls Royce with all their dealerships around the world to working with some of the largest charities in the UK, including Age UK, Art Fund and Macmillan, as well as an extensive portfolio in the uh, not for profit sector and things like membership with BACP the Kennel Club and the Royal Photographic Society, just to name but a few. All of this is done using the Feline Soft Frameworks. Um, these are building blocks which enable us to turbocharge the work that we do for our clients. And one of the unique things about Feline Soft is that we give these away completely for free. These are free to everybody in the not-for-profit sector. It's our way of giving back to the community. So if you need fundraising or you need grant giving or you need membership or you need e-commerce, we've got a building block or a framework that'll help you get what you need. We don't give you what we've got, we give you what you need because it's a framework and it's configurable and extensible. So that's enough from me. Let's get on to the star of the show, Mary Pitt, who's start by telling you a little bit about Art Fund. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Mary. I head up technical operations at Art Fund. Um, so, just a, a quick outline of what Art Fund is and does. We exist to support UK museums and galleries. We do this in lots of different ways. Um, we run a really diverse grants program, um, everything from grants for uh, museums and galleries to acquire objects for their collections, to grants for curatorial development, through to our latest Respond and Reimagine grants program, which we've launched in response to COVID to help museums survive and adapt. Um, we also uh, provide other digital services, notably crowdfunding, a crowdfunding platform Art Happens and a ticketing platform Art Tickets. And we market a membership product, the National Art Pass. Uh, we currently have around 150,000 members. So um, I'm going to tell our story uh, chronologically and hopefully illustrate that it's been it's been gradual and informed as much by what's happened along the way as by us having any initial master plan that we've simply followed. So there's the overall outline and then I'll go through year by year what we've done and how that's fed into the plan going forward. So uh, 2017, a really good place to start is our uh, digital maturity assessment. So essentially, we brought in a consultancy who looked at every aspect of um, our digital maturity, so people, processes, and the tech itself. And we didn't get a very high score. Um, I think we got 39 out of 100. So lots of things kicked off as a result. Uh, we created personas. This was to give us a better shared understanding of our external audiences. Uh, we identified four in 2017. They were culture seekers, active givers, arts professionals, and students. And what we were really doing there was looking at what the drivers for each persona um, to engage with Art Fund would be, and also what their barriers were in relation to engagement with Art Fund. So once we had these, we looked at use cases by persona across art funds. So how we wanted each persona or how each persona currently engaged uh, in different ways with art fund. And this really surfaced how teams in art fund were approaching the same audience in completely different ways. Um, so for example, the team in charge of grant giving were working with quite an old school grant application user journey. And they assumed that this is what curators would be looking for. Uh, meanwhile, the team that supported the same audience in running crowdfunding campaigns had developed a completely different user experience for the curator, much more focused on breaking things down, giving curators what they needed in kind of bite-sized chunks at each step of the way, from first looking into crowdfunding to actually running a campaign. So we knew we needed to address this kind of inconsistency. 
And meanwhile, in 2017, on the tech front, we knew we needed to replace our CRM. Um, we were kind of stuck on an old CRM that was that killer combination of very siloed and almost impossible to develop on. We were really keen to get onto a platform that allowed us to evolve the, the tech. Um, we already had this in place with our web developers and not having it for such a core system as CRM was, was really holding us back. So uh, this was where FelineSoft came in. Thank you, Mary. And um, one of the unique things about this for us is the appetite and the desire for Artfund to be working in a continuous improvement fashion. This is really delightful for Feline Soft. We tend to migrate all of our clients towards this, but the desire to not do projects which naturally drain resource and distract from the day task, it, it was really exciting for us. So we won the tender and then we got to work. Let's hear a little bit more about how that happened. Uh, so on to 2018, um, which in November of 2018, that was when we actually got CRM MVP uh, live. So this was the, the minimum viable product we could go with that enabled us to turn off our old CRM and switch to the new. Uh, it was obviously a pretty big exercise and there's a, a lot that emerged from this to inform our ongoing journey. So uh, we definitely got some things right. Uh, those included fostering a good working relationship between our web developers and Feline Soft. Uh, one of the key benefits of the new CRM was, was real-time integration with our website and delivering this really needed both partners to work together well. I think we were also uh, pretty good at being fairly ruthless in what went into MVP and not trying to push everything in, but but to really focus on, on getting the, the, the minimum viable product out there. I think things we got wrong um, definitely included sort of expectations management within Art Fund. I think we... Uh, we were basically um, plumbing, taking out and, and, and plumbing in the core component of our tech stack, and it was a it was a massive deal. And meanwhile, the rest of our fund was still pursuing kind of quite ambitious targets for recruiting members, retaining members, running crowdfunding campaigns, launching new grants programs, and generally business as usual. And it was incredibly stressful. And I think in particular, there was far too much pressure on, on one person, our, our CRM product owner, who was trying to deal with all the stuff happening on the existing system and build the new with, with FelineSoft. Um, I think there was another thing that we didn't do so well, which, which is quite interesting, actually. We, we, we fixed our front-end user experience um, thinking we were doing ourselves a favor. But in retrospect, I think it was a, it was a bad idea. Um, we ended up kind of preserving front-end user experience on things like checkout that maybe wasn't that great um, and actually necessitated a lot of very complex integration between CRM and the website that just made our lives more difficult. Um, I think, Ralph, you've probably got some input on what we did right and what we did wrong. Of course. I mean, like any project, there's going to be some highs and there's going to be some lows. But I, first of all, I wanted to pick up on the, the culture. And for a while, we've joked that the, the tech is the easy bit, but we, we are experts in that area, so we should say that. But the, the culture really does make a difference, getting the right people and the right team and having an atmosphere where you can be transparent and open and honest, that really does matter, particularly when you get into the thick of it through things like Go Live. Knowing that you can communicate clearly and transparently with people really will benefit your project. So we'd encourage you to look at the fit across all of your suppliers and within your team when you start a project. And we'll also compliment Art Fund on their view of MVP. Believe it or not, as a supplier, we actually say, please, can you spend less money with us? Because the smaller you can make your MVP, the lower the risk will be and the faster you'll be getting value back. And then we can get into what we could call um, continuous improvement. And I would also note finally as well that our frameworks are designed to be a, a, a single instance of all your data and of all your business logic, and that enables unified CART. And that was the bit where I would agree with Mary again, the locking in of the user experience meant that we couldn't quite benefit as much as we might have done from the agile approach. As we learned along, we kind of realized that actually we could make it better, but that requirements constraint kind of helped us in a bit. So should we move to 2019? 2019 it is, and that was, 
uh, a kind of year of catch up on the tech front. So uh, saying lots of things we we you know didn't push into MVP. We were we we were putting those out through throughout 2019. I think feline software were obviously critical in getting us through this because uh, having got MVP out, we were on to the continuous improvement process, um, which I think, uh, Ralph, if you want to say a bit about, and then I can just talk about how it was applied in our particular situation. Of course, you know, feline soft look with all of their clients to move to continuous improvement. You know, we have a, a mantra that says no more projects. We noted earlier that it sucks resource out of the organization. And we want to get you into improvement being the day job that that's the the angle we want to take and you know there's always things that you discover during a project that don't make the mvp cut and then there's the the standard optimization you know there's going to be things that you can make better post go live and that's what we want to focus on with our clients and get you into steady improvement um, and that it has been really helpful for us getting those sort of structured processes in. I think we had we had kind of ongoing evolution with the web developers, but it wasn't very structured. So uh, getting those those processes in, and actually one of the big uh, wins for 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 us, in, in, interestingly, was that we had a fixed budget for technical development that that we controlled within tech, and that was uh, reflected our kind of capacity to get stuff through the pipeline, and that that was a, a real help. Um, so we're doing all that on the tech side. What we also needed to ensure was that on the upstream kind of UX and design side, we were focused on incremental continuous improvement to, to align with what we were putting in place downstream tech. So uh, we did in 2019 a, a bit of a kind of proof of concept with our digital partner. And this is really where the crawl, walk, run moniker was coined. So we took a business objective. Um, in this case, it was to increase our student audience, in particular to increase the number of students signing up for Student Art Pass, which is the student version of our, our, our membership product. And we had actually conducted an experiment on this in 2018. We'd created a simple landing page on our main website to sell Student Art Passes. And this had been very successful. So in a way, that was the kind of crawl bit, the, the sort of experimental trial, you know, is this worth pursuing? So we were now looking to gradually develop um, we decided in the end a dedicated student website as students as a persona didn't fit that easily on our main artfund.org site. Um, so in 2019, we did the kind of next step of this, um, uh, uh, building this dedicated student website and it launched in September 2019. It's been very successful, you could call that the walk phase. And we're now actually launching the next run phase. Uh, which is a little bit more focused on student retention. So it's just it's just quite a neat example of of, of the crawl walk run approach. Um, I also I talked a few slides back about digital maturity covering people, process, and tech. On the people front, I think one of the big takeaways from running the new continuous improvement crawl walk run approach, um, and indeed stuff that come out of CRM MVP, was we didn't have the right roles in place. So we did quite a major exercise to draw up what we called our new human architecture. And this addressed all sorts of gaps from the need to have a, a, what we've called a DevOps manager role dedicated to, to running continuous improvement across two technical partners. And also we put in place a, a single digital services team within Art Fund who can ensure this holistic approach to our external audience personas and champion crawl, walk, run at source, if you like. And I think these new roles, and those are just a couple of examples, are making things easier for us and for Feline Soft. I, I'd certainly second that as well. And I think it's something that's quite unique about Feline Soft. From the start of our engagement with our clients, we'll be, we support all of our clients in understanding how to get the most out of continuous improvement by explaining the roles and the structures that work internally to be able to drive value. In fact, a lot of our clients and you know, our fund were already well down this journey will convert to using the continuous improvement approach for the vast majority of their projects, not just for the ones they work with us. And we'd be delighted to answer any questions on that if you want to reach out to us. Um, okay, back on the tech front, another key piece that kicked off in 2019 um, and again, informed by everything we'd done, was we, we really wanted to get uh, our grants management piece onto a continuous improvement platform. So it, it's a it's a kind of the remaining key element of our tech stack that we really uh, want to be able to evolve. And it's currently 
currently built out of what is essentially a finance platform. Consequently, the tech providers are not really continuous improvement oriented, so it's getting left behind. So going for you know, we, we really were picking up on the let's let's do this continuous improvement uh, across the board. Um, so we're now into 2020 um, and things started. Uh, everything was was kind of going as planned. We were busy rolling out our new human architecture, gearing up to, to re-platform grants. Benefits of our new integrated CRM platform were coming through. All was great. Uh, then COVID hit and everything was kind of thrown up into the air. And I think um, the most immediate challenge for us was it, it really threatened to drastically reduce investment in tech. So our what we call our velocity um, for you know the capacity we have to run the regular continuous improvement sprints uh, was under threat, and the trustees and, and leadership team were reviewing everything in the face of what was happening. So I mean, obviously, museums and galleries were were shutting down. Many of them were under an existential threat. Not many people were buying a national art pass, which was obviously affecting our revenue. So it was it was quite a kind of quite hair raising. But thankfully, Art Fund took the view that we needed to keep up the tech investment to ensure we could both support the sector through the crisis and hit the ground running with revenue generating activities as museums and galleries started to open up. Um, it's definitely worth saying we were in a good place to have got to have replaced our CRM, got it in the cloud, got ourselves into a regular development release process before COVID. I think, Ralph, you'd, you'd agree on that. Completely, Mary. Um, it was really quite a delight to be working with an organization that was thinking cloud first and thinking continuous improvement first. both of those things with particular the, sort of the digital maturity uh, and feline soft and the fact that we've already migrated you into the cloud meant that when um, covid struck that we simply continued to work in the way that we've been working but we negated the face-to-face -face meetings. We were already fully set up with all the infrastructure in the cloud. It was already fully set up with automated deployment, and we're already all used to using Teams. The agile um, uh, and continuous improvement approach, once the funding was guaranteed and continued, meant that you could change track without having to replan or reprocess. You simply dropped the items which supported it into the, the pipeline. Um, so, interestingly, just as it kind of uh, almost a bit of an aside, but COVID did have some unexpected benefits for us. So our art tickets platform, which had been used by a kind of handful of, of museums, venues prior to COVID, it has the functionality to support timed slots. So it's actually grown exponentially as a result of COVID because many museums are now using it literally to enable them to, to reopen and comply with the new rules. So that's that's been fantastic as a means of art fund being able to support them through the extended crisis. Um, where we are now in 2020, so we've, we've got a lot going on that's that's not expected, a result of COVID, but the, the, the good news is we have the funding to keep going forward on the, the kind of uh, digital maturity, continuous improvement journey, and we are really starting to embed new ways of working. So generally we're doing an education exercise across art fund, to get all um, business owners uh, sort of geared up to, to do this experiment first, take the learnings from that into the next incremental step and repeat. And that, that educational exercise is underway, as is one about the importance of what is now pretty well continuous testing of, their, of the digital service or product that they might be responsible for. Um, so we're, we're doing this education kind of very carefully to, to approach it from what does the business owner need to do to take their business objective forward perspective. So advising them which team in Art Fund, whether it's digital services, whether it's tech, they need to partner with and when um, as, as they as they sort of take, take their service product um, forward. Okay, I think we are probably should go to questions. Yeah, thank you. Time. Okay, well, I got, okay. Go. Thank you very much for those that managed to join us today. Um, I hope you've learned some um, interesting insights that will help you manage your projects better. And if you want to work with a successful partner, please reach out to Feline Soft. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And hope